Hello and welcome to episode 149 of my podcast all about knitting and crochet and my yarn shop here in Wiesbaden, Germany. I'm Kiko and today is July 18th, 2022. Today I'm wearing two old things uh, which both did not make it into Ravelry. So there's not there's no Ravelry page for them because um, I knit them at a time when I um, wasn't using Ravelry yet or it didn't even exist yet I don't know <laughs> so the first one is my um, spiral scarf um, out of the book Knitting Nature by Nora Gorn and I think this was one of my maybe even the first ever project made with Noro yarn so Noro I'm sure most of you will know is a Japanese yarn dyer who's um, known for his many vibrant um, colors and special yarns uh, they're usually uh, mostly natural yarns and I think there's very often there's silk in it and sometimes mohair and a lot of times um, wool different sorts of so um, yeah so this was one of the first projects I ever made out of Noro yarn I love the color um, and as you can see this all these colors were in one ball of yarn and then um, this was knit I think the pieces were knit from the outside in but then um, you always picked up stitches when you started the next motif so they were um, knit onto each other and because these are are these pentagons one two three four five six no these are six-sided whatever <laughs> but you don't um, I could have attached this on on this end then it would have been a straight scarf but the funny thing about it is that you always uh, move it one to the inside so you get this by <laughs> it's really difficult to explain but I think it's quite easy to see and uh, I like it a lot I hardly ever wear it <laughs> but on a warm day like today it's nice to have just a bit of color without a lot of warmth so it's perfect for today and the top I'm wearing is knit out of pure cotton it's the Millifilly by Wollerödel and it's just a very simple top in five different colors and I started knitting in the round then I split for the front and back um, both sides have a v-neck and then I crocheted a an edge in different colors um, yeah I really like it a lot and one of the main reasons I put it on today is because it sort of inspired my finished object for today that I wanted to show you and I left it at home so I can't show it today it's I'm really frustrated um, but I promise I will take pictures later and I put them up on Ravelry so if you want to have a look you can already have a look there and then next week I promise I will wear it so it will be what I'm wearing next week and then you can see it on me and then you will see it's um, it's a bit of a diff uh, the basic shape is the same um, but it's the one with the four colors with the um, heather colors and I'm really happy that I finished it um, I ended up doing the necklines the same front and back but you will see that next week um, or on the pictures on Ravelry and then I'll talk about I'll talk more about that then <clears throat> yeah that brings me straight into finished objects the other sort of finished object that I have here to show you are some more squares that I crocheted and knit um, I told you that I was doing these workshops uh, for knitted and crocheted coasters and while I was doing that I was crocheting and knitting along and I did two more squares out of the Japanese book that I have that has 12 basic um, shapes or patterns most of them squares some are round and two are triangles and my plan is to at some point knit all 12 motifs and I think these are now number six and seven not too sure but I will check it out later and then once I finish um, finish all of them I'll show them again with the book I'm not quite sure whether I showed the book two weeks ago or three weeks ago, two episodes ago, and I definitely show the book in my book special episode. 
<laughs> so those two are out of that um, book. Then I crochet two fairly simple granny squares while I was teaching the granny square. And then I decided to do this um, scalloped edge. And then I realized that if you do six rounds of granny square, there's two different ways you can place these um, things. <laughs> so either you can put them in the corner and then you, you have two in between, or you can put them all on the sides and you sort of cut off the corner. I thought it's quite interesting that those two possibilities exist and I just wanted to see what the difference was. So I crochet two just to have a look at that. So that's that. And then I knit one um, coaster and I wanted to practice my double knitting um, technique, my abilities. So I decided to knit a few sheep onto a green meadow. <laughs> and I'm really happy with how it turned out. I'm really happy with the cast on and the um, sewn bind off uh, with the edge stitches I'm still practicing so they're mostly quite good except for I think here I got it wrong a little bit but that's what you practice for and this is the other side and I find that the green sheep <laughs> look a lot better in a way than the white sheep there was supposed to be white sheep on green grass but um, maybe because it's the dark on the light uh, background I sort of feel they are a bit easier to see. I don't know, but they're both nice and you can use it this way round or that way round, so that's okay. That's all for finished objects. Um, works in progress, as usual, I'll start with the socks. Um, and I put a lot of work into my plaid pocket socks, number two. And I'm knitting on the second sock. Of the second pair these are the colors that I chose and I not only finished the double knit um, pocket on my sock so um, it was quite good to do a bit more double knitting at the same time so it re really helped me there are no mistakes on the inside of this sock the other one has a few mistakes which is not bad I also finished the heel and I finished about half the foot so I'm really glad that I'm zooming along on these socks and I'm looking forward to finishing them. And, um, and then I will probably take a picture with all the sock madness socks that I knit this year. Um, again, not as many as I wanted to, but I think once this sock is done, I haven't any sock madness pattern on the needle. So I'll just take a picture of what I've done so far and then I can post it somewhere. <laughs> okay, the next pair of socks that I have on my needle are the Catherine McCauley socks out of the Blue Stockings book by Kate Davies and I'm knitting that as part of the pattern battle and I have finished the bit of the foot before the heel increases. This is what the pattern looks like. Really happy with it. It's easy to knit. I like the colors of the yarn. I like the way the pattern looks. And now I'm looking forward to starting the increases for the heel. And I started another pair of socks. It's my only cast on, new cast on for the last two weeks. So I think that's okay. Um, and this is another reason I want to finish my plaid pocket socks. It's quite funny that um, I keep using the yarn that I'm using in the plaid pocket socks for other socks. So when I was doing the unbearable, adorable socks I was using the white for those socks and now I'm using the white of that pair in these socks and these are the film real socks and I forgot to write down the designer I'll do that by next week and these are going to be for my nephew who loves taking photographs who loves to film and he's probably going to um, start studying something like filmmaking in the future so I think this is the perfect um, sock for him and as his whole family so my sister's family they're all very much into movies and going to the movie theater and things like that so I'm planning on knitting a pair of um, 
film reel socks for everyone in the family and my nephew is just just happens to be uh, the first one to get them and so it'll be a surprise for him I know he doesn't watch my videos um, but the others will then have seen the pattern but that's okay they will all get different colors <clears throat> so um, we'll see about that film reel socks um, and I'm always using the white from my plaid pocket socks <laughs> Um, by the way, the main color that I'm using here is again out of the Africa series by Opal and like the way this film looks. <laughs> so that's the socks. Then on to clothes out of sock yarn and I actually knit on my gnome pullover. Um, go Big or Go Gnome by Sarah Shira. I finished the two sleeves. I done the ribbing for the front and back and now I've knit the little mushrooms that go into the bottom of the front and back and I actually did the leather back jacquard technique. So what you do with this technique is you create new stitches that run sort of behind the pullover and the, what, uh, what it does is that when I have long floats I don't um, cross my yarns to catch the floats but I catch the floats on these stitches so as you can see a float is never longer than this which is uh, three or four stitches uh, with my knitting it means that for every one of these stitches that you can see I had an extra extra stitch on my needle uh, which made the knitting fairly slow and you can sort of see where I picked up those extra stitches I picked them up from behind the stitch. It's also possible to do a knit front back and then use the back part as the back stitch. Um, I did it this way, maybe next time I'll try the other way. But I really like the mushrooms. I finished the um, color work and I'm now knitting in a different needle, which um, I stopped halfway through knitting in the new needle. <clears throat> So I could show the whole pullover rather nicely. Um, I tend to go down a needle size for the color work because I always try to keep my float so loose that my whole knitting loosens up. I'm basically a very tight knitter, but with color work I loosen up so I go down a needle size. So right now I'm going back up a needle size to make sure that the um, solid color part has the same tension as the um, color work part. And then once I get to the yoke and I go back to the color work, finally knitting gnomes, um, I'll go down a needle size again. If I don't forget, I sometimes do forget these things, but I'll try and remember. <laughs> so that's the one garment. And the other garment is my um, Voldacke neon rainbow jacket that first was just a black jacket for a really long time and now I'm finally knitting all the beautiful Voldacke colors and I finished the second side with the purple so both fronts have purple now and I've started the bright pink and I did a few of the short rows on this side and uh, I put in a long cable just so I could try it on and I could show it to you um yeah really really enjoying that so um now i can go on knitting the pink so that's the garments out of sock yarn then we come to the um cotton department and my oldest project out of cotton is the vortex shawl and i think two of you have um asked about the the pattern for it and I realized I forgot to put the um, the link to my Ravelry page underneath the last couple of videos so I don't know how that happened but I'll make sure that today I'll put a link my um, project my Ravelry page uh, on Ravelry underneath the video and there I link both to the um, pattern for the basic shawl which is the vortex shawl it's a free pattern for this um, beautiful but fairly simple main part of the shawl and I also linked the pattern for the knitted on edge which is part of a shawl in a um, 
It's a magazine with patterns inspired by... Can't remember the name, but I've linked it so you can niche, uh, you can click on the link. It's not a free pattern, so you'd maybe you can buy the single pattern. Maybe you have to get the whole magazine. I don't know, but um, I'll just make sure the link is there. I've added several pattern repeats. I don't even know how many, but this is the beginning of the seventh, eighth of the shawl. So the second to last hundred stitches that I have to knit so this is the rest of this eighth and then this is the last hundred stitches of the shawl and then I'm finally done and I'm really happy that I put some work in but I'm really getting tired of knitting this pattern but I'm really looking forward to finishing it so that keeps me motivated and I hope in a few weeks time this will finally be done. I still have quite a bit of yarn, so no problem there. It's just repeating the same thing over and over and over again. Okay, but I'll get it done at some point. Then the next um, cotton project is the Talavera blanket. Um, the pattern is in the is out of the Simply Crochet magazine. I received the um, this month's uh, this month's um, edition, which has the fourth part of the pattern, but I'm still crocheting on the third part. So the first part was just the round thing in the middle, and then the second part was up until this blue stripe, and now I've done about half of the third part of the pattern. And as the fourth part has already uh, appeared, I um, yep, have enough to work on, on this blanket. But I really like it, like the bright colors and the summery feel, enjoy crocheting on it. And yeah, so this is the first of three blankets that I'm working on at the moment. And I've actually put some work in all of them, into all of them. Um, the oldest of the blankets is probably my memories blanket or project memories blanket and I added three squares to this blanket. So these were the last two that I showed you some weeks ago. This is one of the sock madness socks that I knit this year. This is the um, the cat socks that I knit for the same nephew who's getting the full real socks now. And this is the leftover yarn from my, um, that was a triangular shawl that I knit. I think it was also part of the pattern battle, wasn't it? I got it um, as a subscription yarn, but it then came out in the Africa series by Opal. And um, yeah, so really happy to have those squares in my memory blanket. I have four more squares to do to finish this side and then I can start with the next side. Yeah and the third blanket of course is my dinosaur blanket and um, I am getting towards the end of Yarn balls number two in both colors, so getting really close. And for this blanket, I actually will stand up to show it to you. And uh, one viewer wrote uh, in the comments that she really enjoyed me showing off the blanket at the moment because, um, as she put it, it's a dinosaur body with a Kiko hat. <laughs> so now you're getting the <laughs> Kiko dinosaur. <laughs> I've continued crocheting on the head. So this is what it looks at the moment. So you can see the hand is probably finished, almost finished or quite finished. The tail not yet, there's still a bit of tail to come. And these are not the, um, these are just, just, um, just spots on his chin. <laughs> this could be, what is this? This could be the beginning of his eye, but uh, I think the mouth and the nose are higher up. So it's 
he has a really big head so um yeah but still love it still enjoy the crocheting this is the other side yeah so maybe this week i can finish off the two yarns and then we'll see what the dinosaur looks like then the next project i have to show you is the high sierra shawl by romi that i'm knitting out of red and black beautiful lace yarn and even though i'm at the end of the row it doesn't look like it because i knit the lace pattern on just half the triangle so this is basically a triangle but I only knit the lace bit on this half and not on this half and this is what the lace pattern looks like this has really big holes these are double yarn overs these are triple yarn overs they're really really big but um, yeah really nice and now that I finished this bit I can pick up stitches here and then I'm going back to knitting um, all the stitches adding some more stripes and once I've done that then the next lace bit will come on this half of the shawl so that's that and that brings me to my last project and these are the mini socks for our knit along and I did not knit a lot on that all I did was knit a green toe or half the toe <laughs> As you can see, it's not the same color as uh, the beginning of the first sock, but uh, I couldn't find anything in that color, so I decided I'll go with this. I had a tiny bit of um, leftover. I had green leftover yarn from the tiny mini socks I was knitting, and I thought it sort of goes with the green that's in the yarn, so that's fine. Haven't woven in the ends yet, but this means I have a third pair of finished mini socks and I can start the next pair now. I hope you, you also enjoy knitting mini socks and if you want to you can show your pictures in the Ravelry group uh, over in the Kikos Strickschule Ravelry group uh, if you want to. Yeah so that's everything and that's actually everything I knit and crocheted last in the last two weeks because no more um, uh, hip projects. Uh, you saw the um, things that I knit and crocheted for the hobby video last week. Uh, once I continue knitting or crocheting on those, I will um, put up Ravelry pages and then I will talk more about them and then you can see how they progress. I hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you in the next one. Bye!